This is Echo 3, and let's discuss Delta V. Simply put, Delta V is the change, or the potential for change, in velocity. The Greek letter delta represents change, and V stands for velocity. In order to calculate how much a rocket can change its velocity, we will use the rocket equation to figure out the delta V, which is delta V equals ISP times G times the natural logarithm of the mass zero divided by mass one. ISP in the equation stands for an engine's specific impulse. Simply put, it is a way to measure the engine's efficiency. The faster and straighter the material exits the engine, the more efficient it is. And you can right click on an engine in the parts menu and see its ISP rating. G is Earth's gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. This number is used regardless of where the rocket is, no matter if we are orbiting Joule or if we are on the surface of Eve, it doesn't matter, we always use 9.81 meters per second. The last part of the equation is the natural logarithm of the fully fueled mass of the rocket divided by the dry mass, or completely empty of fuel. By multiplying these numbers, you can calculate a rocket's delta V, or how much it's able to change its velocity. We can highlight this in Kerbal Space Program. In the Vehicle Assembly Building, we can try some different rocket configurations and see how the delta V changes. The stock game uh, also has a delta V calculator. Uh, note that by default it uses the atmospheric ISP rating, and that's uh, Kerbin's sea level atmospheric ISP rating, rather than the vacuum one. Normally I'm going to use the Kerbal Engineer readout at the top of the screen. Uh, it's just what I've been using for a long time and I'm more familiar with it. But the stock game is fine for calculating delta V. Note two, um, they, other things you'll need to know, like an engine's uh, thrust to weight ratio, but we're not going to worry about that for this uh, tutorial. Now normally when I build a rocket, I will use a delta V map for reference, and you can find some good ones on the wiki page or the subreddit Kerbal Academy. And then I will build my rocket from the last stage down to the first stage, uh, meaning what returns to Kerbin will be the first thing I design and I'll work my way backwards to the launch and booster stage. And, and this uh, really simplifies the process and makes sure you have the right amount of delta V per stage. Um, now what I'm doing here, I'm going to design a rocket to kind of cheat into orbit and I'm trying to give it exactly <laughs> 4,000 meters per second of delta V. I was finding it difficult to be exact in these numbers. Um, I just couldn't quite get exactly 4,000, but I tried really hard to get there. Now this rocket isn't anything special, nothing to worry about copying. This is just going to be a test rocket that we are going to put into orbit around Kerbin to highlight the rest of this tutorial. Now, we've looked at what delta V is and how it's calculated, but you may still be kind of wondering why is delta V important? Why don't we just consider the amount of fuel a rocket has? Well, there's a lot more um, going on. An orbital characteristic, uh, one orbital characteristic is its velocity. So an orbit is, um, sorry, an orbit is defined by several things. One of them is its velocity, and that's the one we can change. So we're gonna cheat this rocket into a perfectly circular 100 kilometer orbit around Kerbin. Now our orbital height of 100 kilometers is in reference to our altitude above Kerbin's sea level. While that can be important to know, for the sake of this experiment, we will need to know the radius of our orbit. Since Kerbin is a sphere with a radius of 600 kilometers, we can just add our 100 kilometers to get 700 kilometers. The rest of this gets a little bit more complicated, but I'm sure Kepler would approve. We need to know a few more parameters in order to make our calculations. We need to know that the MUN is in a perfectly circular orbit around Kerbin with an orbital radius of 12,000 kilometers. We also need to know the standard gravitational parameter of Kerbin. This information is available on the wiki page, and this figure is 3.531600 times 10 to the 12th power meters cubed per second squared. 
With this information, we can calculate how much to change our velocity to go from a 100 kilometer circular orbit around Kerbin out to the month. Uh, the equation looks like this, and that is the square root um, mu divided by r1 times the square root of <laughs> uh, 2 times r2 divided by r1 plus 2 minus 1, and that will equal the delta v needed to change our velocity out to the month. Um, so in this case, uh, we can write that out, and we will end up getting 845.66 meters per second of delta v. That means we need to change our velocity and increase it by, you know, 845 meters per second in order to raise our orbit out to the month. If you look at any delta v map, you will notice that they will use a figure very close to this for getting a close encounter with the month. Now, if you'd like to do all these calculations for yourself, all the information needed is available in the game and on the wiki page. Uh, personally, I prefer to use the delta v calculator in the game and the Kerbal Engineer readout um, and make my maneuver nodes by hand, but it is possible to do the math for yourself. Uh, you can see, I can just type in, uh, you know, uh, 845 meters per second into the prograde um, information there of the maneuver node maker, and it goes right out to the month. But <laughs> I can just drag the marker to, and it'll be about that much. Hey, now you know why the game and rocket scientists use delta V rather than fuel capacity or other measurements to refer to where a craft is able to go. Thanks for joining me to discuss Delta V.